everybody. So glad to have you here today. And we're just going to take a moment and just worship the Lord. So why don't you lift your hands up right where you are. We're going to thank the Lord for all that he has done for us. That's right. God's been good to us and he's been better to us than we have been to ourselves. And if you've just joined us, you've just tuned in to At Three With Me. And I'm telling you, I feel the presence of the Lord in this place in such an awesome way today. And uh, let's give him praise. Why don't we do that? While others are coming in, let's worship him today. Glory to your name, Jesus. 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 We give you praise, God. We give you glory, God, for all that you are. We give you glory for who you are. We praise you because we're your people, God. We're your people, God. See us as your people, God. Don't see us as your enemy, God, but see us as your people. And we give you praise and we give you worship. And we give you all the glory. And our hearts are humble before you today because you're so awesome and you're so holy.
Do you love him? Do you love him today? I'm telling you, God is, he's an awesome God. And um, we always have time to give him praise and bless his holy name. You know, that brings me to, um, to a point that um, I wanted to bring to you today. And um, my sleep was kind of awkward last night and, and I found myself, you know, just not being able to, to fall asleep. And, and then when I finally did fall asleep, just waking up in the middle of the night and just going up in my holy tongues. And, um, and whenever the Lord does me like that in this house, there's something that God is about to do awesome. And um, something that he is speaking. And the Lord began to talk to me and reiterate to me something he said to us yesterday. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He began to talk to me about power and about the fact that power people belong to God. And I want somebody to get this today. And freedom is coming in your mind and in your heart this very minute. I feel somebody right now. Power belongs to God and Him alone. When you look at that word, if you would let me go back a little bit. When we looked at that word yesterday and we start talking about what it meant to have power. And we look at the scriptures that I'm not going to be before you long today because of course you all know that I'm on my way to golf. <clears throat> and I'm preaching on Wednesday and Thursday morning in the early morning prayer. And um, when I started thinking about power and how power is authority given to one and enabling them to have an advantage over the decision making. Power is when the authority is given to one to decide how a situation is going to turn out because the outcome of every situation is authority. It's who has the authority. I always say um, the person that catches you in the conception of your trial will determine how you come out of it. If you let somebody weak that's full of fear and torment catch you in the offset of an experience that God is about to walk you through, then they will determine your mindset as to how you see it. And somebody is going through something today and I feel it very strongly. But I'm here to tell you that I'm here to catch you in the offset of this thing because when we understand who really has the power, then we won't tremble at what we see in our natural eyes. When the Bible said power belongs to God, it does. I was telling somebody, I said, what is it that's causing us? Last night I was talking, I said, the reason why I believe that we're not seeing the full manifestation of the power of God because the Bible tells us that the Lord will not give this power and this authority to those that do not belong to him. There's a commitment that needs to take place if you're going to be the one to determine the, outs the outset. And I wanna tell you today that the outcome is in your control because the person that controls it all, lives on the inside of you. Are you hearing me today? Are you hearing me? Well, then let's look at some of those situations. Let's look at when Jehoshaphat was getting ready to go to battle. My God. And he looked out and he saw that they were outnumbered. He saw a hopeless situation. He saw something that if he didn't have an answer and if he didn't have a God that's on his side, he wouldn't have never made it. 
But the Bible said that he did not consult with flesh. My God from Zion. He did not ask the flesh, what should we do? He went and asked the Lord. And he said to the Lord, I need an answer on this. And when God gave him the word, and it's the word that God is giving you today, that you're coming out of this with the victory. Oh, I'm not shaken. I'm not shaken by nothing that I'm seeing right now because we are on schedule. The world as we know it is on schedule. We kept crying out for revival, but we can't get revival until there was a need for the masses to understand that our only hope is in God. Our only answer is in God. Are you hearing me? The Bible said Jehoshaphat went down there. And when they began to battle, the Lord, the author of the outcome, my God, I felt that, the author of the outcome had the power to stop the sun, people. Are y'all hearing me? He has the power to stop this earth. I think we done forgot who God is. We have forgotten who the Lord is. He's not just somebody that we called on, that is a fictitious name, that is a religious experience. The Lord is strong and mighty, and the Lord is mighty in battle. But today, you've got to choose your weapon. My God from Zion. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Too many weapons. Too many weapons. But you got to choose your weapon. You got to choose your weapon. Because if you are a believer today, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You know, I heard somebody say a couple of days ago, we done prayed enough. And we might as well just get up off our knees and do something. What an ignorant thing to say. We've never prayed enough. And we haven't prayed enough until we see the answer from God. And that's why the Lord began to deal with me and began to say to me that the world system is not how I survive. The world system is not how you're going to make it. You're going to make it because your trust is in the system of the heavens. Your trust is in the system of a God world. There's another world beside this world. There's another world that's ruling this world. There's another president. Oh, you don't hear me. There's another president. There's another Supreme Court. There's another judge. And he sits in a place waiting for a people to consult him about their issues so that he can give you the final answer. Yes, there are answers, but there is a final answer. And I'm here to tell you that God has the power. He is the only power. There is no other alternative. There is nothing else to trust. All of the ground is sinking sand. Are you hearing me? The scripture said, I will trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not, lean not, lean not, lean not, lean not to my own understanding. But in all of my ways, in everything that I go to do, in everything that I go to say, I'm going to trust in the Lord because what I need is for him to direct my path. We don't need to be on an emotional whim. I keep telling you, I keep telling you, the enemy is coming with all kinds of distractions. He's coming with all kinds of stuff. And just be careful because the enemy is coming and he uses the people that are closest to you. Are you hearing me? He don't care who he uses. All he need is to use something or somebody to distract your attention off of the authority that you already possess. You don't have to pray for it. You got it. You don't have to seek God for it. You got it. Then, then, then Dr. Biden, what do I need to fast for? We need to fast so that the power that is in you can be projected in the earth realm. So you can be the manifestation of that power. 
I was reading the other day on Facebook something that just stirred me. It stirred me to my heart. And it was a passage about a boy who was in the United States Army. And he was saying that I'm a believer. And he said that he was being persecuted. And that the sergeant and the drill sergeant was persecuting him. Because they wanted him to, to, to denounce his belief. And the sergeant said, you believe in God. And he was talking about them having a drill one day. And the sergeant said, I want you to go and park that Jeep. And he said, when he walked off to go and park the Jeep, everybody started snickering. When he got in the Jeep, he started the Jeep up. Went and parked the Jeep by the side of the building where the man told him to park it. And he said, when he got out, everybody started running to him and falling on the ground crying. Said, we're going to serve your God. Because they said, when they lift up the hood, there was no engine in the truck. That's the kind of God I'm talking about. I'm talking about a God that when the devil tried to make mockery out of you, the Lord will come and stand in your defense. Are you hearing what God is saying to you today? Are you really hearing what he is saying to us today? You don't know the power that you possess I was on my way to a preaching engagement and I had one flight to catch. And while I was on my way there, there was an accident. By the time I got to the airport, it was 10 minutes before the plane was taken off. I went to the counter and I said to the lady, there was an accident, but I need to get on this plane. She started to scream at me. You done missed this flight. You're not getting on this plane. And people of God, I bowed my head. I didn't get in her war. I didn't get in her mindset. I didn't get in her way of thinking. I didn't get in her aggravation. I stood still and stayed in my confidence. And I bowed on my head. And this lady was yelling so until people on both sides at the other counter. She was talking about that you people are always late. And you people this and you people that. And I just stood there. And while she was yelling, she put her head down. And start typing something. And she was like, I can put you on the next flight. And when she put her head down, I started praying on top of her head. I started saying, mine, I command you to be turned in the direction of the Lord. Mine, I command you to line up because the souls that are on the other side of this city, they need this word. I said, I command this mind to come in alignment with what God desires. And all of a sudden she looked up and said, Give me your boarding pass. And she said, uh, let me call the sky cap. And she was still angry. She called the sky cap. She said, take all of this lady's luggage down to the plane. Tell security, I said, let the bags through. She yelled at me all the way there. When we got to the door, the plane door was shut. She said, open up this door so I can let this lady on this plane. She was still mad. But who had authority was a God in me. And I'm here to tell you right now, God is still on the throne. God is still in authority. God still has a last say so. God is still the chief in command. God is still the president of this country. God is still the authority over your life. God is still the ruler over your children. Are you hearing me? You have nothing to fear. Nothing at all. Therefore, 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 fear not, fear not, fear not. I keep hearing the Lord say that. For the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear. So if we got it, it's not from God. And we as a people, we got to begin to pray for real. And I'm not talking about a whisper prayer here and a whisper prayer there. I'm talking about praying until the heaven gates open. I'm talking about praying until demon spirits come subject. I'm talking about praying until God starts slaying people out on the sidewalks. I'm talking about praying until people don't know what to do with the righteous. It is our time. And I turn to decree authority in the earth realm. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. We're not here for a race war. We're here to command the times to stay in alignment with the will of God. We're here to make sure that this world stays on schedule. Because the Bible said these times will come. The Bible said that. 
that in the end times that we will live in perilous times. Well, what is our job? Pray for the revival of these times. Pray because this is the hour that your sons and your daughters want to be converted. This is the hour. Why? Because when we get to the place where we don't know what to do, not God say, will anybody hear me? Will anybody hear me? Will anybody hear the word of the Lord? And why don't we want to hear him? Why don't we want to hear him? He woke me up with this. Four o'clock this morning. And he said, Juanita, people want me to be awesome. And they want me to be great. My God. They want me to be great. They want me to be awesome. He said, because they want me to be all the things that they can use for their own benefit. He said, but one thing that I am, that everybody seemed to be ignoring in this hour. He said, I'm holy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah, my Oh, yeah, my God. He said, I'm holy. He said, I'm holy. He said, I'm holy. He said, they want me to be awesome so they can be awesome. They want me to be great so they can be great. They want me to be powerful so they can be powerful. But who wants holy? Because I am holy. I am holy. And he said, people don't want holy. Because holy means I have to remove myself from the equation. Holy means I have to remove what I feel. Holy means I have to give up my right to be right. Holy means I have to yield to the power of God. Holy means I have to wait on him for divine instructions. Holy means I can't do it my way. That's what holy means. Holy means I now must be a reflection of the power of God. Let me say something to you. The Lord gave me something. He gave me something. <laughs> I put a prayer garden outside of my house in the front yard with beautiful flowers. And um, I wanted it to be lit up. And so I heard the Lord say, go buy a solar light. Literally, he said a solar light. So I went and I bought these solar lights. And I was looking for the cords and there was no cords. And so we set the lights up at 6.30. There was no light at 7.30, there was no light. Come eight o'clock, I opened the door and went out there and there was the lights. They were shining. They had the whole flower garden lit up. I don't know what They had the whole flower garden lit up. And I said, my God, how is that done? And so he told me to look up the word solar. And you know what that definition said? It said that the reason why the solar light can shine in darkness is because when the sun is up, the solar light takes in the sun and it stores the sun inside of its panel, turns it in the energy and it waits for the dark because when the dark comes, the light that is shining is the remembrance and the reflection of what it took in. Are you hearing this? We got to be a light in all of this darkness. We got to be a light in all of this darkness. But we can't be if we don't stop people and take in the sun. If we don't stop and take in the illumination of the word of God in the dark time. All we can project is what's in us and that's darkness. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing this? It said, it stores the light. And it says, it needs a negative. And it said, when the negative is there and that light is stored, watch this. 
If whenever there is any excitement, like instant darkness, any movement that doesn't look like light, it's that because of that energy and that stirring up, it causes the negative to be moved over into the positive. That's how it's moved. It's moved because it remembers light. It's moved over to the positive because it remembers the word of the Lord. Are you hearing me? We got to remember what God said. You got to remember what God said about you in this hour. You got to remember what the Lord has prophesied over you. You got to store that. What I'm speaking today, you got to grab this. You got to send it. You got to share it with all of your family, with all of your friends, because we got to remember the word of the Lord. Because in the dark hour, that's when the light still gives you vision. And let me tell you this. My God, I came home. I came home one night and one of the lights was out and I looked over in the yard and I said, the light is out. And I said, I wonder why the light is out. I said, wait a minute. I said, this is solar. And I know I didn't touch the lights. And I said something, I don't know what's going on. So I went on the bed. When I got up the next morning, thank you, Jesus. That light disturbed me. The light not being on disturbed me. And the church ought to be disturbed right now because the light ain't bright enough. It disturbed me that that light wasn't on. I jumped up and I ran outside in my pajamas. I got to see why this light ain't on. When I walked over there to the panel, there was a big glump of dirt on top of the panel. The people were working in my yard the day before. There was a big glump of dirt. And you know what the Lord said? He said, I can do dark, but I don't do dirty. I said, my God from Zion. He said, I can do dark, but I don't do dirty. He said, that clump of dirt is not a reflection of me. And because it's not a reflection of me, I can't shine on nothing in the midst of darkness. He said, we got to get rid of the dirt. You got to make sure that the panel of your heart is cleaned off. You got to make sure that you're moving in the things of God for your dream. Are we still talking about the dream? Yes, we are. Are we still talking about the vision? Yes, we are. Why? Because we don't want a dirty vision. We don't want a dream and a vision that's being birthed in a place where we have no integrity. We have no love for God. We don't intend to use what God has given us to be a light to this world. Are you hearing me today? Are you hearing me today, my God? And God, we thank you. And God, I thank you for these people. I thank you right now for everybody that's listening. I thank you, God. I'm asking you right now to turn us. I'm asking you right now, Jesus. I'm asking you right now, Jesus. I'm asking you right now to turn us. Turn us, God. Turn our hearts, God. Turn our minds towards you, God. Don't let us faint in the day of tribulation. Don't let us faint, God. Oh, God. You're worthy. Oh, God. Oh, God. Raise us up to be a mighty people. of hope in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, get the glory out of all of this. Oh God, I know you are. I know you are. I know your works. I know the way you work. And I know I see victory. I know I see it in. I know God that you're going to do something miraculous. I know that I choose to see that this is the revival. I choose to see that this is the birthing of the greatest revival that the world has ever seen. God, I praise you. I praise you. I glorify you because this is not about race. Oh God, I praise you because this is not about white and black. This is about your timing. This is about what you have been yearning to do. This is about your heartbeat. This is about your travail. Oh God, and I thank you. Oh, God, and I thank you. Day and night, night and day. Your incense, Lord. The incense of worship will rise up out of me, Jesus. I will not take down. I will not shake. I will not turn away from you in this hour. I will not turn my confidence away from you. Because you are our only hope. And we worship you today. And we give you glory. And we give you glory. For being the power for being the power of all powers, for being the ruler over all rulers. Here I will shine. Thank you, God. Thank you.
to God. Somebody worship him. Somebody worship him. He is the authority. And as you worship him, the power of strength is going to come up in you. Oh my God. Grab a hold to your hope. He's here now. He's here now. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Power belongs to God. Power belongs to God. Glory to God. Oh, you got to excuse me today. You may not understand what I'm doing, but you got to excuse me today. But I feel led to speak in the holy language. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the victory. Thank you for the victory. Power belong to God. Power belong to God. In every battle that we've seen. Oh my God. Every battle. Every battle. Every battle. When Israel was on the verge of being completely wiped out. Do you remember Mordecai? Do you remember Esther? Power belong to God. Ain't nobody in no real authority. Nobody. <laughs> Everything that's happening, God is allowing it. And he got a purpose for it. Ain't nobody in no real authority. Don't get it twisted. He has the last so-so. You think you in authority, all he got to do is snatch your breath. The Supreme Court think they in authority. All, gotta, God, all God got to do is wave his hand across the whole road. And everybody will be gone just like that. You think everybody think they got the power? All God got to do is close his hand and shut down the oxygen to the brain. And people will instantly go insane. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Are you hearing? He's waiting for the righteous to tell him what it is we want him to do. My God and God, what I want you to do is send a mighty way. I'm asking you to send a mighty way. I'm asking you while they on the streets that you send a mighty way. I'm asking you, God. I'm asking you, God. I'm asking you, God. Oh, my God. Somebody said we want peace. Mm. Wow. Wow. Somebody said we want peace. Somebody said we want peace. I want to see your brothers and your sisters saved. I want to see your mothers and your fathers turn to Jesus. And the only way that they will, they got to see that there is no other hope but God. That there is no other hope but God. My God. My God. Are you hearing that? Songs say you are worthy of it all because from you come all things and to you are all things and you deserve the glory. Power belong to God. Power belong to God. And as I leave today to get ready to go, I want you to know Greater is he. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Greater is he who liveth in me. He who lives in the world. We got the greater one. Let's worship you. Get your focus back. Stay the course. Stay the course. Get your focus back. He's already overcome the world. That's why he ruled the world.
The world is on schedule. My God. The world is on schedule. Well, I gotta go. My God, not out of Those of you all that'll be at golf, I look to see you there. You know what I want to do? I feel led of the Lord to flash pray. The Lord brought that to me today. He said, I want you to start doing flash prayers. And I said, God, what is that? He said, I want the people that sign up for you for the email that's been writing you at AT3 with me, at three with me. I want those people to just email and say, let's pray. Let's pray. I just need 1,000 people to email me and say, let's pray at at three with me, A-T-3, W-I-T-H-M-E, at three with me, at JuanitaBynum.com. I need 1,000 people. That's all I need. Because one can chase a thousand and two can put 10,000 a flight. And he said there would be different times that I would give it to you and send out an email blast and say, I'm getting ready to go live and pray. And sometime it's going to be three o'clock in the morning. Sometime it's going to be six o'clock in the evening. Sometime it's going to be 6 a.m. He said, but do not schedule a time. He said, because I want a people that I can depend upon, that I can wake up in the middle of the night, that they can hear that alarm and know that it's time to pray. Thank you, Jesus. It's time to flash pray. It's time to re-strategize in the spirit realm. Because this is spiritual. I remember when I was going through, and I'm going to leave this with you. And this is how I came out of it. This is how the spirit of the enemy, fear, doubt, unbelief, feeling like I can do something. I need to do something. I can work this out. I can try to work it out. All of that was broken off of me. And you know how? Because I was sitting up crying. I was sitting up shaking like somebody is right now. And you know what God said to me? This ain't personal, Juanita. This is business. I wept from a place that day that was a, it was a place that I, I still haven't experienced again since that day. He said, this is not personal. He said, you are taking this personal. And everything that I've allowed to happen to you is not personal. It's business. It's kingdom business. Everything that's happening now, we can't take it personal. This is business. This is kingdom business. Mm. Don't know who to vote for? That's just what God wanted. Don't know what's right and what's wrong? That's just what God wanted. Everything is in the chaos and everything is in the uproar? Yeah. Because he wants somebody to seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things that we need will be added. He wants somebody to look to the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help cometh from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He would not suffer our foot to be moved. And he that keepeth me neither slumber nor sleep. The church is about to rise up. Zion is about to take the stage. My God. My God, I see it. Zion is about to take the stage. Kingdom of God is well. Oh, we will join heaven in Kingdom of God is well. I can hear the sound in the spirit. They in the underground and they're waiting. They're waiting. They're waiting for the marching orders. There's a march going on. But the kingdom is about to march too. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
I speak the peace of God over you. I speak a calm over your spirit. I call you to come into the mindset of a God that you serve. I call you today not to shake but to shift. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I speak it by the authority of God. I give you back your courage. I give you back your power to decide. And I decree and declare that no weapon that's formed against you shall He's run. lifting your head. God's got it. Do you believe that? He's lifting your head. He's lifting your head. Lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? Who is this King? Who is the King of glory? Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty and bad. We serve a mighty God. Gotta go. Love you. Email me. I need 1,000 people to say let's pray.
there were some that went to God. My assignment is to go to God. Will you join me? AT3 with me. 1,000 people is what I'm looking for. And we're going to re-strategize and flash pray. Let's go.